All right, this is on name and name changes. Um, there's a few brothers and sisters who are beginning to act on that good word about choosing a good name. A good name is rather to be chosen than silver and uh, gold from the proverbs and a, and a good name or a new name and a good name. Now, there's many different ways to approach how one might go about to get a name one might already have a particular name already in mind from a English or, or a Western perspective, like they know what it is in the King James Bible, and they would like to get that name from the Ethiopic or from the Royal Amharic, according to the Mets of Caduce of Negus and Negus, and utilize that name. Now, the surname, we advise the surname, like the last name, that we as Rastafari choose Tafari. Tefari in pronunciation, but the standard Tafari in the in the so-called Western um, transliteration of it, though one can choose or adopt a a different interpretation or different transliteration, but you know whether it's spelled T A F A R I. This is the way I personally have chosen to spell it because the standard is the standard um, transliteration, but others might choose the T A F F. A-R-I, which is less standard, but still it is somewhat correct. Remember, we translate from the Ethiopic into the English. So that right there is something that one should have a little proficiency or, or seek pretty good counsel of those who both understand the Ethiopic, the Royal Amharic, our first language, as well as the, um, the English or the Western languages. Like you could be a good understander of the Hebrew, but if you don't know the language you're translating into very well, your translation is going to lack something. So anyway, there's a sister, one of the sisters, and um, hopefully she'll get to see this as well, because her question or her, what she has sought that has actually helped us as well within um, coming forward and presenting just this briefly to you all. Now, when we looked up, she said something that means generous or kind. She she was looking at a particular attribute, you know, a particular um, um, attribute, generous, kind, or what What was the other word, too? It was another word, generous, kind, or or caring. Now, that first word is the key word that we would like to, to go on, this kind of. So right here, we see right here, we put it within the Blue Letter Bible. Now, there's a lot of online materials. There's offline books as well, but some of them might be a little more tedious, you know, take a little bit more time. And in order to redeem the time one has Internet, one can at least ground where they're looking for it using these Bible search and these other search engines. This is the Blue Letter Bible here. You know, one of the particular search engines that we, we say is highly um, favorable. But when we search for generous, since she's looking for, I think, a, a Hebraic-based name, but within this Ethiopic um, word sound or proper pure language um, word sound and power. So it's based on the Hebraic or based on our, our divine heritage. Now, she had access for an Amharic the Amharic meaning of generous. That's a little bit easier, you know what I'm Because generous is basically churnet, you know what I'm Or his generosity, open-handedness, churnet too. But now, this is one way of searching it. Now, as you can see right here, it says, sorry, the word generous does not occur in the King James Version, which is kind of interesting if you explore that thought. What? The word generous is not in the King James Version of the Bible. Because in that time, 1611, Shakespearean age, they used different words. Now, what particular word? And we're going to find out a little bit more right here. When we go to the um, Eliyahu, you understand? Or this particular concordance right here online, and this is what's known as the Eliyah, Eliyah, E L I Y A H dot C O M dot com. It's the lexicon page because there's a concordance page as well. When we go to this particular page, let's um, move this a little more over front and center so you can see this a little bit more fuller over here in the viewer. Okay, right here. So when we go to this particular um, page, we find um, we will find this, 
let's just get this uh, front and center now. There's the book, the Strong Concordance is a book. You can order from from either us to the internet, or if you have a local um, Bible bookstore, a local bookstore that would order these, um, some of these books, I would definitely say to um, patronize that local bookstore, you know, where there's people on hand that, you know, really will help you, you understand, to, to find what you are what you are looking for. So we have right here the strong concordance with the Hebrew and Greek lexicon. And she's looking for a name. And this particular name she's looking for for a first name or a chosen name. As we said, the surname for those who are interested as Rastafari faithful, the surname is Tafari. Not even Selassie in that sense, because Selassie is part of the compound name of Haile Selassie and Kedamawi Haile Selassie. And that's a, a, another level. Remember, that was his baptismal name or spiritual name, baptismal name. And one still can get a baptismal name um, if one chooses to be baptized in the Orthodox or through the Orthodox Church, which is something that can be beneficial for those brothers and sisters who have gone that, that, that route. But still one has to study and know the truth for themselves can't just say I belong to a particular church and they know the truth there and you don't know the truth. You have to know the truth for yourself and to seek it out. So what we did was right here go to the Strong's. You can see this over here. This is uh, um, the Strong's lexicon. It's a full search by Strong's word number, according to Strong's word number, or an English word, or an English word. Now, some words, as we just saw, don't appear if you just look for them somewhere in the Bible, you understand, they don't appear. So if we put it up here, as we did on the Blue Letter Bible page, and just showed you that it doesn't appear in the King James Version, it will basically show the same thing that's not there. But the interesting thing is that when we went here, when we went here, we, we clicked on the search right here, and um, we had found this. As far as helping us now from a Hebraic, taking the English word, and we might have to find synonyms, similar words that might have been used in the King James time to look under those particular words to find either an already existing Hebraic name or a usage that can help us um, ground ground ourselves in a particular in a particular in a particular name. Now let's just straighten this out right here now. As you can see right here, we have the Strong's Hebrew Lexicon search results. Now, the result was of the search for generous. This is going into the translated meanings that are applied to the existing uh, Hebraic, um, Hebraic uh, Strong's Concordance. And that's one of the best reference sources, and we do advise that now here the name that comes up is two names for female for generous is number fifty two Abish Abi Shai Ab they show right here E Sha E Abishai Abishai or a shorter version of it is Abshai. Now though this is also um it can be a feminine or a masculine. A lot of names are not gender they are gender neutral in a sense, just as our soul before the Father is, when it says gender neutral, is, is not dependent on our outer gender of male or female. This is where the equality in Christ. This is what it means as souls, as children of God or creatures of God even. Before rebirth, we are creatures. After rebirth, we become children. So part of the rebirth process is also that name change and to identify ourselves with God's word. You understand, both in spirit and in truth in the expression in this world. This is why the name change is very, very important. So for the sister who asked about generous, here we see Abishai, Abi, Abi, Shai, or Abi, Abishai, Abishai, or shorter, Abshai, Abshai, from one, and it's, it's 7862. Now, over here where it says 7862 would be the H7862. So if you go back right to the Blue Letter Bible, for example, these are online resources that, that should be easy for people who have 
pretty good or decent online access. It, you can look this up and find areas in Scripture. We're in the Eliyah Concordance or the, at the Eliyah, E-L-I-Y-A-H dot com. And these pages are very good. I would definitely say bookmark them, and you can use them in a lot of different searches um, and study as a study tool. So it says, Father of a Gift. And this is probably generous right here. Abishai was an Israelite, and it's also spelled Abishai. So there's Abishai, the literal from the Hebrew up here. And then this is the way you'll probably find it in the King James version of it. Now, for ones who are really studying or searching out a good name, we also would advise like the, the, the Metaphysical Bible Dictionary. Because in the Metaphysical Bible Dictionary, it can give a deeper um, spiritual or what they call metaphysical um, explanation to a name. You understand that? Especially those who, who will seek to study these things deeply, and, and we advise that. Though some, when they find a the name, they'll know in their soul there's a, there's a, there's a, a reverberation or a resonance that they know this is the name. Now, there's also Nadib or Nordib, which is 5081, from the 5068, which means, uh, so probably it means voluntary, generous, hence in a sense of magnanimous, as now, a, grand, a grandee. It, but in this sense, it could be sometimes a tyrant, you know, as one who's magnanimous. Sometimes this can be considered, quote, a tyrant. It says free or liberal things, noble, prince, willing, Hearted, willing, uh, hearted. It reminds me of Aminadab. You know the name Aminadab? The word Nadab, if you look up Aminadab, it means, um, Ami means my people of a willing heart, of a generous heart. But now, here's the thing that I find to be interesting as well. This is one particular way of, of searching for a name by looking up, per, per se, the attribute. So if someone were to say, I was interested in a name, and we looked this up, or they looked this up. This is a choice right here of a name from a Hebraic. Or they may say, I would like to get mines from a more of a, uh, some that means, and it has a scriptural reference, generous in a, Hebraic, in, a, in, a, in, a, in a Hebraic sense through the Ethiopic Bible. And I would say Chernet, the name Chernet. In fact, that is a name of, of, of woman, right? That particular name, Chernet. Echernet may be a name of woman is an attribute as well in the in the um, Ethiopic and in the in the Hebrew. And um, what we like to do is to bring up um, the the the, he, the Hebraic. I think it says um, it says uh, when it says the Mo Most High, the Almighty is 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 Chernet in the Bible. We're going to look at this on another on another laptop right here, which is out of the viewing angle, because we want to get the, the English, the English or the King James, and then we can also find one other way of looking up these, these names or studying or searching out a good name. So here we're going to go to Chernet. Let's go to Chernet, and we're going to focus on the Psalms. We're going to try to focus on the, on the Psalms as a as a main, as a main, um, as a main uh, frame of it. So we're going to single, single our search right here to the, the Psalms. There are some books like the Psalms that are kind of pure books in their, in their simplicity. Now here is 6 and 4. 6 and 4. Psalm 6 and 4 is one of the first references to... Um, Chernet, right? And here Chernet is described by mercies. So let's just do something right here, and let's go back to this particular search, the strong search, and let's click down here um, and search again. And let's search again, and um, let's look up mercies. Let's look up mercies and see what comes up for mercies from the Hebraic. Like we said, Ethiopically, Chernet would be a name. If one says, okay, that's the name, Chardonnay to the as a beautiful name, and it means generous or open-handed. But if one says, I would like a Hebraic name in the proper or Ethiopic pronunciation. Now, it says here, no 
plural mercy. So let's go singular, mercy. Let's go to mercy and see Hebraically what charnet from the Ethiopic would be Hebraically. And sometimes we find that there's certain already existing names that are already existing from a Hebraic from a Hebraic approach to it. So in our father's house, there are many mansions. So here we have the word Hanan. As you see, this is now the, the result. We have Hanan, or here Hanan, primitive root, 2603. Then we have compared with 2583. Properly, that idea is to bend or to stoop in kindness to an inferior, to favor, to bestow. Um, a causality to implore, move to favor by petition, to beseech, be fear, be kind, find, show favor, um, be or deal or grant graciously. And this is now dealing with some of the root noun words, as you can see right here, to have pity, to pray, to supplicate, Hanan, like the name Hana, like the female name Hana or, or Hana in the in the um, Bible. Then we have corresponding to the 2603 to favor, um, causatively to entreat, to show, to shew, mercy, make supplication. Then you also have this word here, the 2617, chesed, chesed, like the Hasidim. You see the Hasidim community, that is a Hebraic, that's another Hebraic um, interpretation of chur or charnet is to be chesed, to be chesed. Some spell it with the H-A-S-I-D, but here we see it has the K-H, the ch sound. This is kindness by implication towards God, um, piety, rarely by, uh, by opposition, reproof. Or as a subject, it also means beauty. It means favor, good deed, good deed or good deed, uh, goodliness, kindness, kindly, loving kindness. When it says, but the Almighty's loving kindness. It also uses charnet within the, the Ethiopic and the Amharic, the world Amharic. But here from the Hebraic, we have chesed, right? Mercy, kindness, mercy, pity, reproach. But then there's a spin on it. It says wicked thing. There's a, there's a spin on it because every word has a balance. In order to keep it balanced, there is an opposition. You understand? But that opposition and everything that says good over Evil. That is keeping the balance. Here's 3727. Um, Kaporet. Kaporet. You understand? Which is actually the lid or the cover of the sacred ark, which is known as the mercy seat. You understand? It's the place of the divine generosity. 7355, we have Rakam. Rakam or Rakam. Like, like Rakim in the, in the, in the Islamic and, and the Ishmaelic you know, line, a primitive root. Now, it means to fondle by implication to love. So, so it's another kind of, you know, if you notice this word and this word, the 7355, Rakim, you understand? It's like the word in Hosea. Hosea says, Ruhama, Ruhama, she who, on whom favor is shown, and it's low Ruhama. Our suggestion, for example, to the sister probably will come from that area of scripture because in that area of scripture and this ancient sense has been brought forward, has actually been brought forward and preserved even in the King James sense from this Arakam or Rakim. You understand? But the, it has two different definitions here, you know, or two um, degrees. It says Ruhama. You see right here? It gives us the name Ruhama, which in a sense, it, it incorporates God's highest aspect of generosity or also surely, surely mercy, mercifulness, especially to be compassionate, to love. You understand? In its primitive root, it means to fondle, but in the way that a mother would fondle or nurse or nourish or even one who truly loved one would caress that one. So the Ruhama juice in Hosea with Israel is to show that he will now be in love with Israel. He can truly love Israel because we as that collective bride have, have come into that righteousness, his right relationship with him. And here's where the root, we find the root 7356, Rakam, Rakam, 
from the 7355 compassion in the plural. By extension, it means the womb or the Hebraic matrix. This word, ruhama, generosity, compassion, by, by synonym, also means the rakam, or, the, or I think in Arabic it's the rihim, the rihim. Like we have ruh rahe in the Amharic, ruh rahe from that same root. But this in the Hebrew means womb, as cherishing the fetus, as cherishing or loving the fetus. By implication, it means a maiden. A maiden, a maiden, by implications from this root, it can mean bowels, one's bowels, or compassion, damsel, tender, love. Now, the interesting thing to do is when we see these words, to meditate and see, well, what does the bowels have to do with compassion, and how can that deal with love and tender love? And then you begin to see how this, these one words in the root languages have these nuances that are all contained in the one word, but in the English sense, we would have to translate by all these words, but this one word has all of that in it. Great, tender, mercy, pity, or the womb. Then the last, the last of this particular search, right here, the 7359, or Rikame, from the Aramaic, corresponding to the 7356. So this corresponds to the one before, pity or mercy. But as a name, now solidifying, or narrowing down, we have Abishai, we have Abshai, we have Nadib or Nadib, you understand, as an Amin Nadab or Amin Nadib, uh, my people of a willing heart. But for a, a feminine name to show that in, in a name change, we would suggest uh, a Ruhama and refer ones to, um, to the scripture for a fuller contextualization of why, as a chosen name, you understand, as a chosen name, this would be, for example, our own, our own choice. If we were like in that position of a, of a, of a, of, a, of a, choosing a name for a child, you understand, and and, and for a, a daughter on that level, this is this is the name that we would choose from all of that that we have gone through. But showing ones, these are some of the possible ways to actually search these things out for themselves. When going about, as it says, a good name is rather to be chosen. That means you have to go study and research some of this and really find out in prayer, in faith, you know what I'm saying, what it is that you're seeking to um, reflect, what is the light or the divine illumination even through your name, what is the, what is the good aspect that you're seeking to reflect through your name as well as to reflect on your soul and, and your personality in the kingdom. As we said already, the surnames for us in the society are Tafari, just like among the Mohammedans or the Muslims, they would choose Mohammed, or among some of the Jews or the Hebrews or the Israelites, they would choose the name um, Israel, you understand, usually Israel, or other related names. So that's still a, a very a very personal and a prayerful choice. We're, we're just giving our advice. That's a choice that each one has to make in, um, in um, spirit and in truth. So here's Ruhama in the King James Version, right? It's, it's um, Hosea 2 and 1. It says, Say ye to your brethren, say to the brethren, Ami. Ami means my people. And to your sisters, Ruhama. And say to your sisters, Ruhama. Now, let's just go here for a quick, let's, you see this right here? This is the blue letter, the blue letter Bible .org. Let's just click here. See, a lot of this you would have to do in the book, just, you know, studying. And there's, there's, there's instructions on that. Maybe some people could get it easier than others, but... Thank the Almighty for Daniel's prophecy um, being fulfilled in this in this very time where we have a lot of this, you know, at the click of a as he said at the click of a mouse and a little more accessible. So it helps us to do what the Scripture says to redeem the time. And this is on choosing a good name and seeking to answer 
both for ourselves in advice, helping others, and for others in giving them the tools and certain instructions about the tools that they can use in that process of choosing a good name for themselves or for their children. But like we said, we as a, as a family of Aras Tafari in particular should choose the Tafari or Tafari name as our, as our surname, as our surname. The Selassie name is a better name for the baptism, either Tesfa Selassie, Haile Selassie, or another Selassie in, in that order. That's a particular order, you understand? And that order is still in effect. We can become members of the Orthodox, Ethiopic Orthodox Church without any um, dissolution of our Rastafariness, especially once we know the half of the story and we are, um, you know, Amharic and, and Metaf Kedus inclined, so we can follow up on things, you, you know, ask the teachers to show us where in the Amharic or the Gutters. I remember I did that with some of the Ethiopian Orthodox um people, the Digwa and the other, even with um, 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 Abuna Yisahak, and he sent one of his, his particular people who knew the ancient Ethiopic sat down and wrote things in them hard. He said, you sure? You know this? You know this? And once I pointed out certain letters in that more proper pronunciation, he was impressed, and, and it's like his bowels of compassion in a sense. You know, he made photocopies of certain things and, and helped out because that's, that's even where they feel that they're not able to do as best as possible because they recognize so much is embedded and encoded in that pure language like Zephaniah 3 and 9 and 10 says, that he will turn to us a pure language. Now, here, this is the Blue Letter Bible again. Now, as you can see right here, here's the lexicon results for the, for the Strong's Concordance, the 7355 or the Araham, the Araham, the Araham. The Rahim is a verb, right? This is the primitive root. Now down here, if we can move this page, um, we can move this page up a little bit so you can see the outline of biblical of biblical usage. It says to love, love deeply, in the sense of having mercy, to be compassionate, have tender affection, have compassion. So in the Bible use, we see it used in these senses. But in our modern way of understanding things, this is the word generous. This is at the root of, of um, generosity connected with love or charity, in other words, having mercy, having compassion, you understand, having tender, tender affection. There's also a name Mehiret in the Ethiopic, Mehiret. So our role for those whom, whom we're seeking to um, advise those who have gone through our name change page and are seeking, you could say, direct and special consultation on it, will be and is seeking to bring all of this together so that ones can look at the evidence and have their own ability to verify the information for themselves and to pray and to make that particular choice or choices. As you can see, it still goes into compassion, um, compassionate, and it says this is the compassion of God and man. That's why the Muslims say, well, Bismillah, Hir Rahman, Hir Rahim. You know what I'm saying? And you can see Rahman, the Rahman, and the Rahim is, is coming from the same sort of root. To be shown compassion, compassionate. It says here the authorized version or the King James Version, the translation count is 47. It says mercy. Here's the popular authorized version. The usage of this root. In translation is mercy, compassion, pity, love, merciful as a name, Ruhama, and one time as an idea of, um, of a surely. Now, this is now the Genesi or the Jesenius' lexicon, which I think is a very, very good. I really like this lexicon a, a whole lot here. I say I like it, but it might be a little higher level. Um, study for a lot of a lot of people, and they might not right now be wanting or needing to go through all of that. But if ones who are interested and would like to know the the deeper levels of this study, the Jesenius's um, lexicon is a very very good, um, and this is a good entry here. This is why the Blue Letter Bible is one of the favorites because it now gives this clip from 
Jesenius' lexicon, and Jesenius many times would give due reference to the Amharic and to the Ethiopic, especially to the Ethiopic, some of the older words. He was able to find the true meaning in Ethiopic, Jesenius. And here he goes through this same idea, breaking down in the Seretic and in the Arabic. You understand right here the the Ara, um, 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 the Ara, uh, Hima, that, 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 that's connected, Rahima, the Rahma. Then it has right here the primary idea pairing in cherishing, soothing, and gentle emotion of mind compared. That's what's behind being generous. And being generous, the idea or the spirit, the seed behind it is cherishing, soothing, is a gentle emotion of the mind. That's why a lot of people can't be generous because they don't have a gentle emotion in their mind. You know, it's probably psychically burdened from this, from this evil world that we're in. Here is Ritham, but still Christ, Christos, is the, is the way, truth, and life to come out of that, that, that chaos. Here we have Rahim, Rahim, and then we have Yerahim, Yerahim. So we have the different senses here in the Hebrew, to behold with tenderest affection, to compassionate, to compassionate. To be generous, so you hold one and, gen and you open charnet, open handedness, followed by, and then it gives you this followed by the al, you know, which it directs now the word in the Hebrew use of love of parents toward their children. This is a love of they're generous in that sense to their children. Or well, that's the idea from beginning, Isaiah 49 and 15, and of compassion of God towards man, of God also being generous to man. Um, Ruham, Ruham, where we get Ruhama, at this point down here to bring this up, it says to obtain mercy. So those who have obtained mercy, we collectively and those individual, even sisters, who might choose that particular name to show a generosity, compassion, a kindness, or a caring sense would be to obtain mercy because as God has had mercy on us, we show mercy to others. As he has blessed us, we bless others. This is what a ruham would mean in the sense, and this may be found in Proverbs 28 and 13, Hosea 14 and 4. Also to compare this with Hosea 1 and 6. And here, for those who would study concordance results, for this particular word, you have 47 times in about 43 verses. 40, and this is at the real high school or collegiate level of one's Bible studies. And we've gone through this, and we go through this again, just when we have the time or make the time, for a very interesting study, studying each of these verses and comparing it with the Royal Amharic and the Ethiopic and going into some of the root and the depth of it, this is where the word mercy is used in the various different verses, in the various different ways. Like even right here, gracious. We were thinking about gracious when you said about mercy. And gracious, we see, is a 2587. And that might take us to one of the other words that we have already, that we have already touched on. But like we said, as a name, I think we're going to... Um, she has suggested the sister Ruhama for the very reasons here, and as a surname or a last name, as a Rastafari faithful, then it is Tafari or Teferi, because we are bearing witness, even in our name, change, you know, the name change means that there's a change of consciousness, there's a change of identification. That means whatever we identified with in the old is a part of putting away of the old man. Now, our computer here, excuse me, I think it's still scrolling. I believe we did click on gracious right there, which is in 103, 103 and um, 13, 103 and 13, and... Uh, 103 and 4 actually has Charnet, not 13. I'm looking at the Ethiopic right here. Um, and his Charnet, his Charnet is also 
effeminate. Now, another thing, he uses chur net in a feminine way. Now, it brings us back to the root word. If you remember at the earlier part of this, we talked about hanun. We have hanun. This is ha nu nu nu. Uh, this is a we. Ha. This is a h k h or ha sound. Ha. This is a n. This is a w. And this is a n. So this is the n in the middle or the beginning, and this is the n. That's a straight line at the n. Ha nun. And the trans they transliterate here ha nun, and then the pronunciation has the kh because it's not it's not cha nun, but it's ha nun. And the, here they say this is gracious. The main meaning is gracious, and it's used twelve and thirteen times here. Thirteen times, Jesenius has gracious, merciful, um, bene um, benignant, benignant, and it has two particular usages here. At, with this very root, and what we'd like to do is let's just go to the Ethiopic or the Royal Amharic of the Met Askedus, and just closing this off to to, to give a, another substitute, you understand, a possible substitute um, for a possible name for the sister or for ones that you know have been asking about this particular question, but the sister in particular. You understand? Because she has asked and has taken those first steps, and we meditated how best to both suggest to ones but allow them the opportunity to make a good decision. You understand? On this. So here we have verse um, 4, 114, verse 4, where Bamarinya says, Le tamra tu metasebiana derrege, egziab her meharina yikarbaino. It says, he hath made his wonderful works to be remembered. The Lord, or Yahweh, is gracious, it says, and full of compassion. He is gracious, so he uses mahari, mahari in this sense, in the more of the male sense, with, because identifying him, when it talks about his mercy, it uses more mehiret, Mehiret. Many Ethiopian um, Christians and many Ethiopians have the name um, Mehiret. Um, there are many that have the name, and this is Mehiret here. And we're looking this up in the Ethiopic sense as well. And now let's go to 112. Let's just go to 112. So the word is Mahari, but that's the male sense, Mahari. And Mahari might be a male name that one might choose for a for a son or a male who feels likewise or seeks to be generous as the Almighty is generous, seek to be perfect like our Father, then Mahari also may be a good name. Now, here's verse 4. Here's where we're at, Bamarinya. You understand? And here it says, Lekino Chaburhana Bechalama Weta Mahari Na Yikarbai Sadik Imno. Unto or to the upright, there ariseth light in darkness. There ariseth um, enlightenment in spiritual confusion, Babylon, or darkness. He is gracious and full of compassion and righteous. And so it says right here, similar to the previous, Naharina, Nahari, Naharina. He is gracious, and we say that's the male, gracious, which is another way of speaking of generosity, of generosity, um, and full of compassion, yikrbai, or that's actually forgiving, like yikrta, to be forgiving, or one who is, say, says a lot, yikr, yin yikr, or who is uh, who leaves off wrath and leave off the negativity, leave, let that remain behind. That is the yikka, leaving that behind, let, uh, the remainder, leaving that off. Sad kim, sad kim means righteous. Now, I'm just curious about this, and I want to go just to this one more search right here before we close this out on some name change suggestions for looking up or finding a good Rastafari new name in other words, or Ethiopian Hebrew new name. We're going to go to right here, 1, 16 and 5, where it says, Gracious is the Lord, or gracious the Lord, and righteous, yea, our God, merciful. 
Now, it both has gracious and merciful, which should be sort of interesting looking at the translation right here. So when we get to verse uh, 5, it says in verse 5, it says in verse 5, Egezi abeher naharina sadik no amlakachinema yikarbai no. It says that he is Mahari. So here is consistent, even though it, here is consistent, but that, now here, notice down here, for merciful in this sense right here, our God, where it says amlakachin, amlakachinem yikarbai. Now, remember before, it was compassionate before. So the translators, part of, I don't want to say the confusion, but part of it is that the, the English translators were trying to not to translate just the literal word, but were trying to translate a sense within the Angeles, you understand, a sense within the English. So like we said before, we don't see that as being willfully, you understand, willfully, in a sense, malicious, but they were trying to use the limitations of English. The last one in Psalms, to close, out, close this out in Psalms, where it says the Lord is gracious. The Lord is gracious. So 145 and 8, the Lord is gracious and full of compassion, slow to anger and of great, of great mercy. Here it says, it says the Lord or Yahweh, the sustainer Egiziyavi here Lotu Subhat, is gracious Ruchna. Rihru. Rihru. He is Rihru. Gracious and full of compassion. Nahari no. Slow to anger, Kokwita from anger Yaraka. He is far from Kwita, from anger in that sense or punishment, chastisement by extension, mehiretum bizuno, and of great, notice the mehiret is great mercy. Now, mehiret is also another Ethiopian name. So our suggestions would be a ruhama from the, from the Hebraic, according to the Hebraic sense, um, charnet, from the Ethiopic sense of literally mercy or open handedness and as a as a name for a female or a feminine name, um Mehiret. Mehiret. So those three would be our our um main um suggestions or advice to one to one who would seek to, in fact, we have this even Bamarinya, where it would be um, Ruhama, Ruhama, and we, we're seeing this right here in the, in the Ethiopic, and of course, we will provide um, such, a, such a spellings as would be needed from the Ethiopic, should one choose. You understand uh, a good name and and has sought this such a, a name change um, consultation. So this is just a, a, a example or a sample of some of the tools online and some of the ways and means when um, searching out a a good name when a good name is to be chosen. So once again, we say shalom, ras. Tafari. Shalom. Salam Tanat in Aistali. In the name of the King of Kings and his Christ.